Welcome to Fukushima Update. Our first story of the year focuses on the effects of radiation on the human body. After the accident of March 2011, concerns among the population gradually shifted to the consumption of contaminated food. Experts are divided over the long term impact of what they call internal exposure, particularly when the radiation dose is limited. And the absence of a consensus is leaving the public with more questions than answers. Nihon Matsu lies about 50 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. The city is hosting a market where residents receive free vegetables from other prefectures. Many are concerned about internal exposure. Japan has defined maximum levels of radiation for each type of food, but experts are divided over how to evaluate the risk of exposure even to small amounts of radioactive particles. In the municipality of Minamisoma, some 30 kilometers north of the plant, public schools have added radiation screenings to their annual checkups for students. The reference limit is 250 becquerels of radioactive particles for the entire body. The school says 99.9% of students are below this limit. Dr. Masaharu Tsubokura is in charge of monitoring internal exposure to radiation in Fukushima. He says the method adopted by local authorities is efficient. The Japanese government has adopted a position in line with the International Commission on Radiological Protection. It emphasizes that exposure to radiation should be evaluated by looking at the organs or the body as a whole. But not everyone agrees. Dr. Masamichi Nishio uses radiation therapy to treat cancer. He underlines the risks of having radioactive particles inside the body. Radiation therapy is highly localized, but it's still powerful enough to kill cancer cells and affect healthy ones as well. That's why Dr. Nishio believes even limited exposure poses a serious risk. Researchers at Tohoku University in northeastern Japan have begun their own independent study. They're collecting samples of organs from cows and pigs that were exposed to radiation in evacuated areas. The samples are stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius. The researchers hope they will yield clues as to how radioactive particles migrate inside the body. So far, they've been able to verify that cesium tends to accumulate in muscle tissue and the bladder. But the particle's impact on health can only be understood on the basis of a long term study. Meteorologists in Ibaraki Prefecture, just south of Fukushima, made a troubling discovery four days after the nuclear accident. They picked up an unknown substance in the air, up to 40 times thinner than human hair. It turned out to be a combination of cesium and metal particles. One researcher says the concentration of cesium in the samples was so high that the particles could be seen on an electron microscope. Unlike normal cesium, this substance does not dissolve in water. Meaning it's unclear if the body can expel it once ingested. The discovery raises other troubling questions. How much of this substance was released into the atmosphere after the accident? How many people were exposed to it? And how dangerous is it for the ecosystem and humans in particular? 
it will take years or even decades for research projects already underway to yield conclusive results. In the meantime, the people living in Fukushima Prefecture will have to carry on with their lives without a clear answer to their concerns. Miguel Quintana, NTV, Tokyo. And that's it for this edition of Fukushima Update. Please send us your comments or ideas at the following address ntven at mark ntv.co.jp. Thank you for watching and see you again next week.